This is just one of the three new GPUs that NVIDIA is launching today, the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gig. Where are the rest of them? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? And when we reached out to NVIDIA's board partners to find the answer, the responses we got back ranged from complete radio silence to, mm -hmm. what? So I'm supposed to review these cards with no 5060 to test and no 5060 Ti 8 gig to test and somehow draw a conclusion? This is it. This is the point where the game has gotten so stupid that I'm just not willing to play it anymore. Our job is to give you guys an accurate, non-rushed review of these things. But if NVIDIA can't do their part and actually launch the cards when they say they're launching them, my job is impossible. Not to mention that with the current state of things, anything that we say about the value of these supposedly budget-oriented cards would be meaningless anyway, because MSRP needs about a dozen asterisks beside the S these days. Now, to be clear, I'm not blaming Team Green for the state of the global trade situation, but what they do deserve a good old-fashioned tongue lashing for is how they've managed the 50 series launch. They oversold the performance, shipped uncharacteristically buggy software, not to mention hardware. They cherry-picked demos that gloss over some very legitimate downsides to what are, in some cases, legitimately cool features, and then they spread the whole thing out over months in an attempt to dominate the news cycle for far longer than this wet fart of a launch deserves. And for what? NVIDIA, your shareholders don't even care about this worthless gaming segment rounding error anymore. And that's actually the first thing that I want to talk about. Because it feels like with all the intimate dinners with presidents and crocodile leather jackets, NVIDIA seems to have become grossly out of touch with the gamers that this, again, budget card is supposed to delight. Huh? The guy in the leather jacket. You don't need to buy expensive GPUs from him. Huh? I said that our sponsor Jawa is a legit marketplace to buy and sell used GPUs. What? Jesus, he said if you want good deal on GPUs, just go to jawa.gg. NVIDIA told us that their RTX 5060 series GPUs, which we will be covering with unboxings and some light benchmarking over on Short Circuit, are laser focused on users of both older 60 class GPUs and game consoles. And if you look at the Steam hardware survey, this approach actually makes sense, at least on the surface. I mean, almost 25% of users are running some form of 60 class GPU, many of which are locked out of fancy new features like DLSS frame generation and even DLSS AI resolution upscaling for that matter. And we actually planned to explore this upgrade path angle as part of our review. But here's the critical piece that Nvidia seems to be missing. If I bought a base tier GTX 1060, I'm the kind of person who probably spends, you know, about 200 bucks on a GPU. Less if I can snag a deal. What I'm probably not is the kind of person who spends 300, or realistically, 380 or $430 if I want an appropriate amount of VRAM for modern gaming. And Nvidia's argument only gets dumber if we compare to console gaming. I mean, to be clear, I fully acknowledge the benefits of PC gaming. Steam summer sales, free online multiplayer and voice chat, a smorgasbord of games and peripherals spanning decades. But for Nvidia to roll in one week after Nintendo's disastrous reveal that the price of the Switch 2 was $450 and go, okay, but hear me out. Instead of a whole ass console, you could have just the GPU and dinner for two at McDonald's. It's almost comical. Speaking of things comical. What, me? Nice. Real nice, Linus. But what's not nice is the way NVIDIA has treated basically everyone like crap on this launch. We've talked before at length about how NVIDIA's board partners don't have cards, their retail partners don't have products to sell, and their customers can't even afford their products. But they took a massive dump on us too. When we tried to coordinate dates for our reviews, they told us, and I kid you not, just make your content whenever the card arrives. What? We all know how important it is to have a review ready the moment a new product launches. And if there's no set date, it means that whoever sharts out some benchmarks first ends up with the best performing video. This incentivizes low effort, 
low quality reviews, which is harmful to gamers. And it also incentivizes crunch culture. Gross. We're gonna touch on that a little bit later in this video because it was a major factor for us when we decided to sit this one out on LTT and upload this video instead of a video dedicated to the performance and features of the RTX 5060 family. Which is a shame because some of Nvidia's new AI features legitimately are kind of cool. Nvidia has data that proves what I know from speaking to people anecdotally, and that is that most gamers don't really care about pixel perfect image quality, and they will turn on features like AI upscaling and multi-frame gen, which generates three fake frames for every real frame rendered, and enjoy them. And the 5060 series gives gamers access to these features at a lower price point than before. We were legitimately excited to see how they might perform. The problem is that while NVIDIA makes our jobs more difficult doing those investigations, they're also ramping up their bombastic marketing claims, saying things like, 50 times the performance for millions of gamers. I mean, yeah, sure, if you cherry pick the games that support these magical more FPS settings, and if you compare to a nine-year-old card that doesn't support these features, I guess you can say that, but I guess you can also see why NVIDIA after they say stuff like that, doesn't want too many actual reviews of these cards. Did you know in other news that my 2021 Civic Sport is actually faster than Linus's old 2003 Civic? Just uh, don't drag race them against each other, okay? See, Nvidia? It sounds pretty stupid when you say it out loud, right? To be clear, I'm not hating on your AI and performance boosting features. DLSS, multi-frame gen, and in the future, Reflex 2, all seem like excellent tools to have in my gaming toolkit. And it's also clear that all of this stuff is here to stay, given that both Intel and AMD have gotten on board. I just don't like that you're marketing them in a way that completely ignores their downsides, like reduced image quality, sluggish input latency, and whatever Reflex 2's downsides will turn out to be. You're just focusing on padding your numbers, something that's been a bit of a pattern this year. Yeah, let's talk about that. It seems like for NVIDIA, MSRP is a complete lie at this point. Manufactured suggested retail pricing, more like marketing strategy to rip off people. Got him. Because they are never accurate compared to real world prices. It makes it almost impossible for reviewers to properly assess the value of these things. I'm gonna pretend here and say that every card is MSRP and delivers exactly one frame per dollar. That would be the ideal scenario for anyone trying to assess how much damage they want to do to their wallet. Now let's say each card stays at the same frame rate, but has an extra 50 bucks on it because it's not available at MSRP. This can dramatically change the value proposition of a budget card while barely impacting a high-end one. Maybe even turning our conclusion from a recommend to a don't buy. And being left in the dark on these cards is particularly worrisome since with everything going on with global trade right now, we might be lucky if it's only $50 over MSRP. Oh, sorry. I was just gearing up because I know this next point is gonna make some people mad. Unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure that you've heard about the will they, won't they, tariff dance that our red, white, blue, green, and orange neighbors have been doing for the last little while. We made a whole video on this a few months ago, explaining that tariffs are a consumer tax and that they will impact pricing. But what we didn't talk about as much, even though it could be just as impactful, is the way that the constant back and forth of not knowing which tariffs are real and which ones aren't is going to impact businesses, small, medium, and large. This kind of uncertainty affects everything from production forecasting to logistics planning, neither of which can just pivot on a dime. So again, I'm not blaming Nvidia specifically if their supply is kind of messed up or if they have to increase pricing due to tariffs. I mean, heck, we might run into the same thing on LTT store, which totally blows. I'm just saying that as a customer, it is something that you need to be ready for with this launch. The Shipstorm sale event is live now on LTTstore.com. You'll get free shipping on any order over 150 US dollars worldwide. So it's a great time to pick up a commuter backpack or a scribe driver, a screwdriver or anything else you've had your eye on. And we're featuring our lowest price ever on our magnetic cable management essentials bundle. Go check it out at the link down below.
Whoa! NVIDIA has done at least one thing right with the 5060 family. Across the board, it's either on par or cheaper than last generation, which is welcome considering that wafer costs are rumored to have been climbing at an astonishing rate due to TSMC's near monopoly on cutting edge microprocessor fabrication. That means that, assuming that these prices are real, even if these cards performed identically to last gen in native rendering, which they pretty much might, you're at least getting a slightly better performance per dollar. But of course, I don't know any of that for sure, because to add to this shit icing on this so-called launch cake, Nvidia didn't give us the review guide or drivers until last Thursday. That is just three and a half business days to study the documentation, test, retest, message Nvidia in case there are any issues, write the script, edit the script, shoot, edit, review, make fixes, review again, confirm that lab's information is accurate, and then post to YouTube. And okay, sure, I could have just asked people nicely or more likely bribed them to give up their weekend in order to meet the embargo for this one card. And I have no doubt that our world-class team could have done it, but real talk here. For what? So you guys could be mad in the comments about how shit it feels to wait two years for a 5% performance improvement Sunday that has some fake frame sauce drizzled over top. And then they want me to do it again and again at some random future juncture when the other two cards arrive. No, nah, man. NVIDIA, you're acting like that chick that used to be hot and she thinks she's still hot and she thinks I'm gonna like and drop everything when she comes calling like that. But I'm married with three kids now and not only do I love my wife, but if we're being honest, you peaked in high school anyway. I'm not playing your games anymore. <laughs> And honestly, that's a hard thing for me to say. I want to have positive things to say. I like technology. I want to be an enthusiastic voice that's finding the bright points in an increasingly stagnant PC gaming industry. And I'm committed to continuing to work with everyone, including NVIDIA, who we have some really cool projects coming up with that we wouldn't have been able to do without their sponsorship, including some sick giveaways. Like, I still love the products. I still use them at home. It's just hard to be excited about them right now. And it's especially hard to let you guys down. I'm sorry that we didn't have a full review of all of these cards today. We wanted to, and we're gonna do our best within regular office hours to get some numbers into our short circuit unboxing. And we will get some more detailed numbers posted on the LTT Labs website. I just felt like this was the more important message today. Do you know what else is important? The segue to our sponsor, Rocket Money. Don't you love it when you open up your banking app and there were a bunch of surprise charges to your card? Well, with Rocket Money, you can identify recurring charges and even get those subscriptions canceled for you all with just a couple of taps in their app. I mean, you're probably pretty busy, right? Ain't nobody got time to be on a 30 minute call with customer service just to be met with, but are you interested in our premium package? Are you sure you wanna unsubscribe? Rocket Money doesn't just help remove unwanted subscriptions either. They can even take those services that you actually do want and need and negotiate a better deal for you. Just upload a picture of your bill and with a few taps, their team will start the process of calling your provider for you to try to get you the best deal they can. And to set your wallet up for the future, you can use their budgeting feature to help analyze your spending habits and notify you if you're exceeding your limits. So start saving more and spending less. Join over 5 million Rocket Money users by heading over to rocketmoney.com LTT to get started for free or unlock even more features with their premium plans. If you guys enjoyed this video, why not go check out our video about the 5090? That is a review that I'm super proud of and took a ton of work to get done. Even if it's a card that like no one can afford. <laughs>